Okay. So introductions. Introductions. Go for it. Hi, my name is Nicole Bluto, and I've been working in Drupal for about a year and a half. I started on a site for my, my church, and they said, hey, we're going to use Drupal, and we're going to port our site from Plone, which was really, really old and had not been updated to Drupal. And I said, great, that sounds like a great idea. And then the next day, I spent all day figuring out what the heck is Drupal. So that's where I come from, and I fell in love with Drupal. And Chris Stefano. What is Drupal? <laughs> That is a good question. Drupal is a powerful and robust content management system that can do pretty much anything you want it to do. It's constantly growing. It is contributed to by, um, by thousands and thousands of people. It's about nine years old, and it was born in Hungary. Um, and there's a lot of documentation on drupal.org if you want to know more. And Nicole's website also has a, a link to a great video that Pingvision made. Um, you could probably just go to the Ping Vision site. Or NicolePluto.com. <laughs> right. Um, and I'm Rain, uh, Rain Bria, and I came to Drupal through Stand Up to Cancer, um, which is a kind of a, one of those sites that was so huge that it becomes kind of a case study to watch for what to do and what not to do with Drupal in large scale environments. Um, so it's kind of a nice, it's a nice starting place. Um, because it, when you come back to the basics, you start to really see a, a whole lot of interesting stuff, which is why I th one of the reasons why I was interested in doing this se session with Nicole. Um, I have to say, I'm just going to jump in here and say really quickly that one of the big reasons why we're doing this session is because I think we both, um, we, we both kind of took a while to get to the point where we weren't um, actually building our sites in a live environment, which is a very bad thing to do. And not only that, but like I, I don't know about you, but I have plenty of people who come to me for help who, were, who built their sites in live environments and they didn't have any backup system running. And you know, I get an IM all of a sudden from someone saying, I just hosed my database, what do I do? And I said, well, do you have backup and migrate? Why don't you go back a couple hours? And they're like, what's backup and migrate? <laughs> like, uh, you're on your desktop, right? You could just go get the, the, live, uh, the live database and move back that way. I am on live. I can't help you. <laughs> so this is going to help that not happen. So here we go. Right. So we, uh, we're going to start by uh, talking about your, the, assumption, the assumptions that we're making. We're assuming that you have Drupal installed, that you have a site in development on some sort of development server, your laptop, your desktop, or something else. Uh, and we are going to consider we're going to start by considering our target environment, where you would like to move your site to. So, what you want to know is, okay, uh, so you want your development environment to match your target environment. So, you want to make sure that if you're moving live, that your host is running a Linux server, that they have Apache, PHP, MySQL, and that you are going to install the same Drupal version on your live uh, server as, you, as your development server. So uh, we are going to talk about the backup and migrate module. Mm -hmm. This is the page on drupal.org where you can find the backup and migrate module. It's on drupal.org slash project slash backup underscore migrate. Uh, you want to go ahead and install it on your development site and it I'm going to jump in really yes. quickly here because I see people typing away frantically. Um, <laughs> all of this is also going to be online. Um, all these links and everything are also going to be online in a place that we'll point you to. So if you don't get everything, don't worry. Right. And the, the outline <laughs> that we're actually talking from is also available online. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you're going to install it onto your development site. Um, so the, the way you do that is you unzip it and you place it in your sites, all modules folder with all the other modules that are on your site uh, that are contributed. This is not the core modules directory. As you can see, that's, not, that's closed up there. That's part of core. You want to just go open your sites folder and, and, I, and put it in the right just in case, Just in case this is new to anyone, let me, um, actually I can... 
which I'll just go in here. So, um, no, I didn't put it in there. No, okay. Um, there it is. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I was going to do this quickly. I can do this quickly. Hold on. Okay, so just in case this is um, not working for someone. So here's, uh, here's a website right here in this. Um, let me just go into the standard list. So this is your, your kind of your entire website with the Drupal install right here. And then um, this is the sites folder. So everything that's yours will be in the sites folder. And when you're adding modules, it'll be in the all modules directory. Um, and by the way, what we're showing you are the kind of basic defaults. There, there are other ways to do pretty much everything. This yes. is just the basics. OK, so once you have it installed, you need to turn the module on in your modules directory, which you'll find on your administration screen. So it is at your site. Dot, uh, your site slash admin. Do we have a picture there? We do. <laughs> All right, and that's, uh, oh, whoa. that's what it's going to look like, right? All right, so this is one way, this is one way that it can look. Um, as, as you kind of are starting to know, different themes and everything look different. So this theme uses, uh, uses a, a very specific admin theme that's available, um, which we'll give you the link to later. So this is one way that it can look. Um, and let me also go, I think we were also going to show you this in a kind of a, a live environment, sort of live. Um, okay. I need in. to log in. Make sure you're logged in. <laughs> you can't do anything with your site without logging in, except look at it. And if you happen to lock yourself out of your site um, because you forgot to put the login block in your sidebar, you can just go to your site slash user. Yeah, it's just without this last part, that, that URL up there. Okay, so now you should see, in just a second, your list of modules. And add, um, Backup and Migrate is in the other section. Which is beneath everything else, so you'll have to scroll down to see it. Um, I, I need to zoom out. This is too big. Okay, this, this is. I apologize. I was. Uh, uh, where did I go? <laughs> this is very. I very much apologize. This is not being. Totally That's okay. Let's see if, okay. Let's try this again. All right, now we can see more. Okay, so there's a lot of modules installed on here, but if you go all the way down to other, backup and migrate is going to be listed right here in the other option. So it's turned on. All right, so let's and go ahead and go back to our slides. And mm -hmm. we're going to show you uh, the configuration options you have with the backup and migrate module. And we're going to go through that, and then we'll go through the process of actually using it to go to your live environment. Mm -hmm. So, okay. okay. I, I, that's not what I have next. I'm, I'm here. You're on backup and export your templates? Yep. Okay, okay we're going to do it live, though. Um, okay. So much for the slides. We'll come back to those. <laughs> All right. All right, so what Rain's going to do is she's going to open the actual backup and migrate module <laughs> so you can see it. And, um, and we'll go through what all the configuration settings are and what they look like. There it is. Mm -hmm. This right. works better. So... As you can see, uh, it starts with a, a list of tables, and it um, it's not excluding any any of them. And underneath, by default, it's not excluding excluding any of them. Um, and underneath, you see data, 
from the tables and it excludes if you notice, all of the ones that are excluded are cache data. And the reason that that's okay is because cache information gets recreated every time you reload your site. So that doesn't need to be in your in your database hmm. um, backup. I'm, I'm just going to back up for, for a quick moment. Um, so these first two tables, what, what's happening here, what, what she's talking about with exclusion, is when you're backing something up, you can say, don't back up certain data. And that's what, that's what she means by excluding. And then there's a table has two types of, of things. It has, it, well, a database has two types of things. It has the table, and then it has the data in the table. So you can exclude the entire table if you want, which since you're just starting out, we don't recommend that you exclude your entire table at all under any circumstance. Just keep all your tables. But you can exclude the specific data from a table, and that's this second box right here. And you would just do that by selecting those items that you want to exclude. The outline that you'll be able to download gives you some ideas as to which ones are probably safe to exclude. Right. Um, and then you can kind of follow those. When you're starting out, don't, you know, don't exclude anything. Just keep it all just to, to make sure that you know how to move things around. And by the, the defaults that come with this module that are selected are, are good. Mm -hmm. They work. Um, the file name, uh, when in the, in the default, the def default for this module will actually put the name of your site in there as a token. So it will just say in brackets, um, site name. And your site name will be just like that. And so when you, when you create your backup, it'll have your site name. For compression, you can choose the compression that you would like your backup to be um, backed up to. So it can be zipped or not zipped. You can choose the destination. You can save to your files directory inside your Drupal site. Or you can download your backup to your local computer, which is a great option. So uh, you have that. And the files directory, by default, the files directory on your site is going to be in your site's default directory. So if you sort of navigate down there, that's where the files directory will be. And then backup and migrate um, creates a directory right in there for you. So, yeah. Does it do any uh, security against those files? Is there some, any sort of, sort of security risk to have you know, your whole database as a downloadable file in the files mm -hmm. directory, or does it lock down that file? Is that mm -hmm. what there's an HT access file that um, Backup and Migrate automatically creates that's in the directory, which you can also go in and do more to if you'd like to. Okay. Mm -hmm. But make sure that, that's actually, that brings up a really good point with moving Drupal files in general. Please remind me to bring it up, the invisible files. Okay. Please, please remind me to bring that up at the end. All right. Okay, so and then it has the timestamp format. It will timestamp your backup. And it, that's the default format. If you don't like it, you just need to put in a different PHP string, date string. And if you don't know what those look like, if you click the link that says date, it will take you to php.net. And you can pick your string, pretty much. Um, can I go? Yeah. Uh, that's where you can uh, uh, obscure the location of your backup, is in that string field. In the string field. That's great. Right in here. Wow. That's a really cool tip. Can you just say that one more time? So uh, in the date builder, it doesn't require PHP plugins. You can also put in a directory and put it put a Apache password on a directory. And uh, that's where you choose where the database is saved to. Oh. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. You could go outside your, your site altogether. Yes, you could. Okay, so then we're going to go up to the next tab, which is restore slash import database. Okay, so um, if you have, yeah, uh, this allows you to browse your computer for a backup. So if you have a, a local copy of a backup, then you can browse for it to use it to back up your database. Um, you could also, I think there's a link there also to go to your saved database. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to show, I'm going to remind you one more time where to find your backup and migrate files. My computer is going very slowly at the moment. Maybe I won't do that. All right. All right. 
While she talks, I might restart. <laughs> okay. So um, there, there's a link uh, on the. Okay. There we go. Backed up, uh, backed up databases are, are in here. And those are the ones that you can schedule from the module, which we'll show mm -hmm. you. All right. So let's go to the save backups directory. Okay. Um, so it looks like on this site, there has been one saved back, one scheduled. Is it manual? This is manual, yeah. Okay. One manual backup, and as you can see on the right, you can you have links to download that to your local computer. You can restore your database from um, with that database, and you can also delete. And this is these are the scheduled backups mm -hmm. that have been created by. And the backing up only happens, um, it happens on a time sort of process, which you set, and um, which Nicole's going to talk about in, in a moment. And um, we will be talking about something called cron that is absolutely necessary in order for that to actually work. Um, so these are, are kind of dependent on some things that we'll be talking about a little later that you should definitely pay attention to. Okay, so we're just going to look at that backup, that schedule. We already did. The backup schedule? Backup schedule. Yeah, nice. no, yeah. Okay. So this is where you can, you have to make choices. You have to decide um, how many, how often you're going to back up your site. And that is dependent upon what you are doing with your site. Mm -hmm. So if you are in, in heavy development and things are changing all the time, you might want to back it up fairly often, um, every hour. If you know that there's a lot of, if it's live and you know there's a lot of data coming in, a lot of people, um, you know, making comments or, or you know, editing your site every hour would be good. And the number of backups you keep is also dependent on what your site does. I have sites that are, that are not used a whole lot, so I back up every 24 hours and um, I keep three backups. Yeah, when not like this site, <laughs> which is backed up every hour and keeps uh, so when, when you're in the development phase, um, you know, it doesn't matter if there's a slight performance hit, but, um, but Backup and Migrate does momentarily sort of give you a slight performance hit when it does the backup. Um, it's brief, it's slight, but it does happen. So if you have a site that has a lot of users on it, um, very active, that's also something that you need to consider in terms of your backup schedule. Can I just ask a quick question? Mm-hmm. I do because it, for me it's just quick. Um, it's nice. I mean, version control serves purposes as well, but this is just nice. It's just a very um, calming thing to know that if I do something really terrible while I'm building my site and my database just gets hosed, all I have to do is click the restore button. The other, the other reason that I use this, and Nicole actually asked me to bring this up, um, I didn't write it down, so it's a good, um, good the Devel module. Uh, can be used while you're developing to auto-generate enormous quantities of content, which, uh, which is nice when you're, especially when you're theming. Um, one reason why I use, use this and, um, and use the restore option on this is while I'm theming, I might create a whole mess of content and then um, what I, what I want to do is get rid of that content. And rather than go in and delete the content, I'll just go here and click the Restore button to go back to, after I've done my theme, click the Restore button, go back to a version of the database before I put a whole bunch of dummy content in. Uh, does that make sense? Did I lose anyone in talking about that? As long as your theme doesn't As long as your theme's not using the database, yeah. But if you're just doing, like, you know, if you're just working on CSS stuff, and you just need to um, you know, clean it up and make it look good, and you need a lot of content in order to know what it's really going to look like, it's, a great, it's great because it's so quick. You just press Restore, and you're back to where you were before. Okay. It's nice. So that's pretty much all the information you need to know about the Backup and Migrate module. So at this point, we're going to get into the process of migrating your, your site, your development site, to a different environment. And so what, once you have your database backup, you want to copy your site's folder. 
from your development environment. Yes. Are there any issues about like some of the maps and whatnot being wrong? Like if you want to take too long in order to get into the area, you don't have enough time to like get which key you want in that area. I mean some settings that maps that you set up for that in the upper world that you don't want to like you know run your area up or down by um five in the morning. Um you know, I usually set my PHP memory to be, um, you know, about 96 or, or something like that. I think they, they <laughs> people tend to recommend something smaller. I usually set it around there, um, and I haven't had a problem. Um, Chris Stefano, do you have any insights into that? Yeah, I haven't had a problem, but... It depends on how many modules you've got. Yeah. So this module is specific to the database. The other elements of your site wouldn't be included in the background. Is that right. right. This is right. just for the database. This just uh, downloads your, it backs up your MySQL mm -hmm. database data and tables, which mm -hmm. is separate from Drupal and um, the, so the design of the site. Different strategies for the elements other than the database. Right. And that's what like we're a version of the elements on site. Yeah. When you migrate your site, you have to move everything. everything. Yeah. You know, but it, it's you have to move them right. separately. Yeah. What on incremental backups? Does it support incremental at all? What do you mean by incremental? This is just backing up the entire database. Entire it's not but backing up changes. If you have a large site with very large tables. Incremental is not mm. there's, right. there's probably for for a very large um, site. There's probably a better tool to oh, use. This is perfect. this is yeah. probably better for smaller sites. Will yeah. you, let's say you extend your SQL database, you add two tables, custom tables or something. Um, you know, will you back that up mm -hmm. as well? So yeah, it's going to back up that everything that's in your Drupal database. In your, your specific site's database, it'll do everything. Yeah. Okay, so you um, add some tables. Uh, about the scalability, uh, sort of about the, the question that you had for very large sites, there is a scalability talk later on today at 5.30 that you, you might want to go to. Oh, yeah. Great. And, yeah. I don't have this actually in my existing module because I use that. Oh, that's a very good question. It's <laughs> not a it's it's not a core module. Um, you download it from Drupal.org. You know, he has the Aquia install. Okay. So it must not be part of their base. Uh, their basic install. Okay, that's good. So. Yeah. So, but even with an Aquia install, I believe that the process is the same. You can go to drupal.org slash projects, mm -hmm. backup underscore migrate, and put it in your site's all modules folder. And then enable it. And enable it. It should be, it should, yeah. it should be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So moving your site. <laughs> so the, the first thing you're going to do when you move your site after you have backed up your database is you're going to copy your site's folder. And your site's folder is right here, and it contains everything that is particular to your site. So you want the whole thing, and it takes a little while if you're using something like files and refs to, to um, copy it. And you're going to, yeah, you, you need a copy. And um, you're going to make sure that on your destination environment, you've already put Drupal, it, the Drupal files itself, you know, the rest of, of what you're seeing here. Um, just make sure that that's already in your destination environment as well when you move your sites folder over. Yeah. Can I give a recommendation here? For yeah. You using image cache, clear it before you yeah. do that. Yeah. That's a really good recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> you can just go to the image cache settings, just clear your image cache. Otherwise, that thing's going to be cranky for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. All of in all, it's just clear all your caches. Like right. just anything that that will regenerate. Just get rid of it before you start moving things and let it regenerate. Okay. Um, All right. So um, you're going to replace the sites folder in your target environment mm -hmm. with the sites folder 
that you just copied from your development environment. Because the, cop the, the default site folder that you download from Drupal is, is essentially empty. It has no content. It has nothing in it. So you want to put the one that has everything from your site, all your modules, all your files, all your themes, and replace the empty sites folder with the full one. So you take your sites folder from your development environment and put it, replace, replace it um, on your live environment, on your target environment. And because Drupal works uh, with a database, then that, that only takes care of your site files. Now you actually have to move your database over as well. Okay. So um, we're going to move on to that part. Oh, and yes. Okay. For me, at least, uh, my username and password for my uh, database is local, so all these data. That's fine. Once, uh, yeah. The live. So, I, so the settings should be. Yeah. Uh, I, I do that, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. I do that too. I, I have different passwords and stuff. I have, you know, really stupid passwords at local and really good ones live. So that's not a problem at all. Just know what they are. And we'll talk about that as well with settings at PHP. All right, cool. So we are going to open PHP My Admin on the live server. So on your host, you open PHP My Admin and you're going to create a new database. So you just type in the name of your database in the field and click create. Okay, and then you click the privileges tab to create a new user. Oh, actually, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. With, and you make sure that user Okay, so um, so I'm just going to add a new user, and um, I'll just let's just do this local for the fun of it. Um, my password is Drupal user. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you want to grant this user all privileges. Well, this would be, right now I'm, I'm just creating the user. Um, I could have created the database at the same time, but, uh, but I'm just going to do this a clean way so that the user and the database sort of start out separate. Um, so now I'm going to go to back to privileges. Now that I created that new user, that Drupal user user, and I'm going to edit Drupal user. And now I'm going to tell Drupal user that um, that Drupal user should actually be able to use a database for Drupal, and that Drupal user should have all privileges. Was that clear? Should I do that again? That was really good. Okay. Do you, do you all want to see it? Again? Allow grant access to all your users? Uh, okay. I've always I've always done it, but maybe that that might be a good point. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. That's really good to know. Um, I will stop doing that. <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. Okay. So, um, so for the first thing that you'll do is you'll create a new database, um, which you can actually do usually from the landing page of um, PHP My Admin. Um, if you can't, you could go under this databases tab, but there's this option right here. So you'll type in a name for the database and then just press create. And then the database will end up here. So we, so I have um, a database for Drupal, which I just created by entering the database name here and creating it. Now this database currently has no users, so um, so nobody can really. Well, it does it as root, but we're not going to use that. So nobody can really do anything with it. So I can't actually put my data in there, or really, oh, well, I could, but I just can't. I can't make my site use this. So I need to create a user for my site. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to go back to my PHP admin, um, PHP my admin, create a user under privileges. Um, so I can just go here to add new user and then give it a name, a password, another password. Um, I'll just say none for now because I'm going to tie them together in the next step and say go. Then it'll create that user for me. That user has just been created, so um, 
and it's um, a uh, Drupal user right here with the password Drupal user. Um, and so I'm just going to go edit Drupal user and scroll down here to database specific privileges. And you can do this to add this user to lots of databases if you want. Um, so I'll call it, um, I'll make it work with a database for Drupal. And then um, I'm going to say, you know what, on a database for Drupal, I want all, ac all access except grant. And then I will click go. And now this user has been tied to the database that we created. So if, um, if you go to a database for Drupal now, under privileges, Drupal user is now a user of that database. Um, the slides walk through this in detail as well. So, and um, I'll be at the table for most of the afternoon, so you can come by as well, uh, if that wasn't clear, um, or if you sort of need to walk through it again. All right, so the next step is that you want to import your database to your old, um, your backup, your backed up database to your new database on your live server. So you're going to do that easily by clicking the import tab and, um, and choosing your file from your local computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can create a file on the fly. That's what goes. This is so weird. Whatever's. <laughs> um, so right now, by default, it's going into files, backup, and migrate. And we'll choose the manual one, the, the last one that we did. That's what you would want to import. So you choose it, and it doesn't matter what compression it is. It automatically will will detect it. Yeah. And when you click. Click go. It will populate your database with all the tables and the data that was in your backup. This might take a little while. <laughs> and the, you know, the reason that I found backup and migrate originally was I was having a hard time making my my uh, SQL database dump pull all the tables. For some reason, when I when I backed up through PHP my admin and then I imported it into a different environment. I was not getting all my tables for some reason, and I don't know why, and I'm not an expert on SQL or PHP or any of this stuff, so I found Backup and Migrate totally solved that problem, and I could do what I needed to do to take the site that I was working on and put it in a live environment. So as you can see now, all of the tables that were in this Drupal database have now um, come into this particular data, this new database on the live environment. So they've all just been imported. Um, some of these are custom fields that, uh, that I've created. So it's not all stuff that came out of the box. Some of it's very customized. OK, so the next thing that you have to do is you have to change your settings.php file. Which is not in phpMyAdmin. No. So we're going to leave this. We're, we're basically done with phpMyAdmin. Um, that part of moving your site. Is now is now complete, um, but in your file itself, let's see. Oh, I hope I. Okay. So your settings.php file is going to be in your sites directory, sites default settings.php. And in this, I'm just going to view line numbers um, so that you can see some text editors will, or code editors or um, you know, tools will allow you to see line numbers. Some don't. Um, if it doesn't, then you can just do a search. Um, you know, do a search for db underscore URL, and then that'll drop you down to where you need to go. Um, but if you can see line numbers, look at this wonderfully secure username password that I have for this, uh, <laughs> this site, um, but it would be user, uh, okay, and then anyway. Okay, so it's on line 92, and you put your information in this form exactly, and the information that she's putting into this form is the information that we just created in the PHP My Admin area that we were just in with the username and database name and the database password. 
it, it's probably going to be localhost, but it may not be. Um, it might be some hosts use you know MySQL dot and then your domain name dot com, or sometimes you can set it up yourself um, a certain way, and so you might have you know you might actually set up your uh, your database to be on a specific server, and then you'll need to know what that is. Usually, it's going to be localhost. Um, if if you're kind of just starting out it, and you're using shared hosting or whatever, it'll probably be localhost. Um, there, this may be a point where you might need to call your host um, if you're brand new and ask some questions. And that's fine. They're usually fairly friendly to people who, who are brand new and ask questions if they're a good host. Um, I've used I've used DreamHost, HostMonster, Bluehost, um, Surtex. I don't really, yeah. Um, and then I've used uh, Hot Drupal. GoDaddy. Yeah, GoDaddy. GoDaddy is very nice to new users, actually. They're very nice. You will grow out of GoDaddy. Quickly. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Hot Drupal is a good step from GoDaddy. But they're nice to you. <laughs> and, yeah, and Hot Drupal is very, is very, um, they have good customer service. Not as fast as GoDaddy. Yeah. I don't know. Do you? I don't. Maybe Cristofano knows. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry? The difference between MySQL and MySQL I. MySQL I is a different database driver. You add things to it in the code. Uh -huh. and there's allegedly a different MySQL. Okay. <laughs> so going to GoDaddy, you said that uh, I would grow out of it fairly quickly. Yeah. What kind of limitations is there? It's, it's slow. It'll run Drupal slow. Uh, the interface is is not, they don't have a cPanel, so the interface is is more difficult to use when you're going into your files and you're going into your PHP MyAdmin and you're going to you know do your cron and all these things that you have to do with Drupal and navigating GoDaddy is a nightmare because it's the design of it is so unique you know finding what you need to find is difficult and then it's slow that's a, that's a big thing how do you much faster also um, um, within GoDaddy So you have to, to have a premium yeah. if you just to pay for a host, or is it? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, they're, they're wonderful. They just want their performance. They want their, yeah. their, their revenue. They, it's not really working for you. I got it. And you like <laughs> And that's it. Right there. You have um, it on the note. For, for their, their base level, and everything past that has been good. But their, my favorite thing is they do one thing for like the new seller and the market and stuff, which is really nice. Um, they they <laughs> You have to do. You have to go the long way around. You have to go the long. You have to pay for the info. Yeah. If if you're um, <laughs> just to jump in really quickly, if you're running, if you're gonna build a Drupal site that's gonna have a lot of users doing a lot of stuff, the shared hosting, um, just simple low level shared hosting is not really a good option for you because you're you're gonna become a bad neighbor or you may have a bad neighbor on your server and it just, it'll create a mess. Yeah. I think uh, uh, touch on stuff in the session following this one. Yeah. If you have something maybe. That's great. That's about great. Shared hosting versus GPS is, is a different category. Yeah, that's can, great. Can you announce your, your session, that, what it's called? and? Uh, I didn't name it, but it's called <laughs> Professional Staging and Deployment. Awesome. Cool. It's just advanced deployment. Great. So, you had a question? And actually, if I had answered this real quickly, with all this dependency on time, does this not run or not run well on Microsoft Server? <laughs> <laughs> we were going to avoid that that topic. Um, why don't, <laughs> um, Cristofano, do you want to cover that in your next session? Or? I'd be happy to. Running Google on Microsoft Server? Uh, or? Yeah, quick answer is it doesn't, but it doesn't, uh, it is much closer to it. <laughs> there's, there's some code testing preferences.org to see Drupal 
running on different types of databases. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but this step right here that we're showing you right now is extremely important and cannot be missed. If you miss this step, you will not have a site. Also, <laughs> the other extremely important thing about this step is you have to be perfectly accurate. Yeah. You have to have your username perfectly accurate, um, caps or no caps or symbols or whatever, your password, your database name. Uh, it has to be exactly right or you're not. it's not going to work. Right. Um, so you should now be, oh, this is where my slides come back in handy. <laughs> um, okay, so once you save that, you should see your site up live. Are yes. you ready to say that? Yes, we are ready to your, say that. Your site should be live. You should be able to see it, and you shouldn't have to go through the install. The installer. No. You yeah, if, you're, if you see the installer, stop. Yes. And, and <laughs> if you see the installer, stop and go back to your, um, your settings.php file. Okay, and if you don't, if you don't do it right, <laughs> this is this is what you should do. Um, you're gonna see the site maintenance error page. It'll say site maintenance. Uh, contact your admin. It might say that. Yeah. You might see that. You, you might, might see, see nothing. See yeah. You might see nothing. Exactly. If you see site maintenance, um, then that's probably the that well they're both fairly easy to solve. Um, but if you see site maintenance, then where you want to go is back to your settings.php file, and you want to scrutinize every single dot comma um, everything oh, in there and just make sure it's accurate. The thing that's probably going to trip uh, those of you who are brand new up the most um, is going to be that different web hosts like to sometimes do different things to database names and usernames. And yes. sometimes they'll put um, like your site name at the front of your, so you set a database name, but they then tack your site name on in front of the, uh, the database name yes. uh, with an underscore in between. Yes. And you're only going to know that if you've kind of looked very carefully or if you've called your host and said, this isn't working, why not? And then you can um, solve that. Yeah. No, DreamHost doesn't do that. Hot Drupal does it. Hot Drupal does it. Surtex does it. Um, HostGator does it. Okay. DreamHost doesn't. Um, I don't think GoDaddy does it. I've never had that problem with GoDaddy. Yeah. They tack. Uh, they tack your site name or your username for their account. Not not your site username, but whatever you set up with your account with the host they'll tack that username or site name onto the front of your database name and your user, your database username. So it'll be instead of, um, you know, for rainbria.com and, and then my, data, my, my database is raindb and then my username is rain, it would actually tack rainbria underscore in front of both of those. So actually my database name is rainbria underscore raindb and my username is rainbria underscore rain. Um, so you just need to watch for that. that. That will probably, for most of you who are brand new and doing this for the first time, that's where you're going to get stuck. That's where your site's not going to work. And so you just kind of, now that you know that, that, that you can look for that, you know how to, yeah. Um, like you say, that's just a shared host. Right. That's how they use, that's how they run a lot of accounts and things. Mm -hmm. So, so um, the, <laughs> you want to go through the rest of this slide? Sure, sure. Okay. So um, troubleshooting step two, white screen of death. <laughs> Oakley, <laughs> you experienced this right next to me a, a few weeks ago. And um, basically the site, there's, there's just nothing there. Well, um, chances are that's because your memory limit is, at, your PHP memory limit is still at the default, which is what, like eight. six or eight, <laughs> which just is not enough. Um, I mean, I, like I said, I run usually at about 96. I, you don't always need to run that high. I think 64 is probably what most people run at, but Cristofano said, you know, 128. Um, so you can go back into your settings. This is, I'm just giving you the easiest way to do this. There's a million ways to do this. Well, maybe not a million. There's like four or five. Cristofano might go into some of them. Um, this is, if you're brand new, the easiest way to take care of this problem is you go to... Um, you, you go to your settings.php file, and if you can see line numbers, go down to line 148, 
and then add a new line below it. Um, if you can't see line numbers, just do a search for all these any sets and then just add uh, one at the bottom of it. And again, this also has to be exact. If it's not exact, your site will break. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. And now there's trouble. Uh, is that clear to everyone? Before I talk about troubleshooting number three, which we didn't put on here because we didn't think about it. Yeah. Make sure you use <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> and you know what? Now that I'm sitting up here exhausted, um, I had a problem I, that I've never seen before with a user earlier that I installed Drupal on her computer, and user one was not able to do anything. Oh, no. And I'm like, what? I, you know, I've, I've, I installed it three times, user one not able to do anything. And you know what? I was very tired, and I, had, I think I had a lowercase m, and I wonder if that's what caused the problem. I wonder. It might not be, but all anyway. right. <laughs> where does the uh, where does so, uppercase M go? Um, it's right here after the. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good question. Yes. Good question. Okay, so troubleshooting number three, which we didn't talk about, is invisible files. Oh um, yes, good remembering. <laughs> HG access your HG access file Drupal install comes with a very important HG access file, and your site won't work. Usually what you'll realize when you'll realize that you don't have your HG access file that you need um, is when you come to your site and your site's there on the landing page but you click on a link and nothing comes up. It, it's an error. And then you click on another link or you try to go to the admin page and there's just nothing. There's You get errors. When that happens usually it's because your HT access file is missing, the proper Drupal HT access file. So, um, so just make sure whenever your uh, HT access is invisible because it's got the little dot in front of it, so you don't actually see it when you're just looking in you know, Finder or um, Windows Explorer, whatever you're, you're using to look for your files, you don't necessarily see it. Um, so whatever your tool of choice is for transferring files, um, if you can show invisible files, do. Um, if you can't, then there are sometimes tools that you can install um, or, or settings that you can enable on your operating system. There's all kinds of options. Yeah? I recommend Pathfinder if you're using OS X. It's like the finder on steroids. That's awesome. Right now, there's a $25 promotion. Great. Great. That's awesome. Finder on steroids. I'm all for that. Um, Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Yeah, Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so, so that's just an important thing to note as well. Make sure that your HT access file went with your Drupal files. And that's going to be true for any module that you include in your site as well. Are we going to move on? I think we have to. Okay. We have All right. minutes. Yeah. Less, less than 10 minutes. Okay, so okay. we can talk about the importance of cron. Good. <laughs> All right, cron. Uh, cron is if you, all right. Why don't you talk about cron? Okay, okay. Cron is um, an extremely important thing for Drupal. It's it's kind of a a task that keeps occurring. Um, that um, sort of it's a scheduler type thing that's described very clearly on Drupal.org or sorry, not on Drupal.org on Wikipedia. Right. Um, if you if you search for cron. And the reason but, that this is a difficult topic is because cron does a lot of things, <laughs> and it's it's it, complex it, and elegant. It kind of it it kind of sort of with cron you can make sure that actions are triggered uh, by you know actions that are triggered by events actually take place. You can make sure that your database backs up, for example, if it's backing up every hour. Well, the site needs to know that an hour has passed. And the only way for it to know that is for cron to run and tell your site, oh, it's been an hour. Um, the time has actually changed. If you're using, um, if you, I think it's called Twitter, actually, the module that pulls a Twitter feed yes. onto your homepage, it's, like um, like is being used on the Drupal Camp website. Yes. Um, you have to have cron run to say, hey, go back out to, to Twitter and pull the newest uh, the newest tweet. Yes. Um, so it it. It's also required if you're using, for example, Simple News to send out um, mail if you have a mailing list. Um, simple News requires cron to know that it needs to send things out. Yes. Um, so pretty much everything on your site needs cron to know that it's supposed to do something. Cron basically triggers events. 
Um, and it's possible, I don't know if, if, if he will, but it's possible that Cristofano will go deeper into it. But, um, but definitely check it up on wikipedia.org, and, and there's a very good definition of it there. So, um, and it's yeah. different on different hosts. Yeah. Do we want to pull up those slides or not? Um, the, I don't think we have time. We have okay. slides that will walk you through setting up cron on cPanel that, uh, that Nicole put together and GoDaddy. And then also one that shows you DreamHost. Um, and that pretty much covers every different type of sort of tool for shared hosting. Yes. Um, the other thing is sometimes shared hosts don't really allow you to mess with cron, or they're or they're very unfriendly about it, or maybe right now it's just too much for you to learn. There's a very easy module that I find does give you a performance hit. Um, so I, I would set up cron when you're ready, when you're sort of feeling like you've learned enough and you're ready. Set up cron on your server. Don't don't use poor man's cron, but. Um, poor man's cron is a is a helper module that'll get you going with actually having cron running on a regular basis, and that's at drupal.org/project/poormanscron. Um, so and it's it's very easy to configure. You'll just it actually it's once you enable it, it's running um, every hour All right. by default. And I think that's it. And we should take questions. Okay. Do you think? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, on poor man's cross. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good point. Thank you. Um, well, it, it's really. I mean, it's it's aptly named. Poor man's cron is very aptly named. It's poor man's cron. It's you can't do it any other way. Um, yeah. So, um, any other questions? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's going to be a much bigger bigger question, and that's I think what Cristofano's session is really about. Um, is that true, Cristofano? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay, that's going to be the max upload files. Wait, on the really? I think you're look. I think that that's coming from your Drupal configuration. You can configure your site to allow you to work with different file sizes, um, because you can definitely restore from larger databases. I think it's the limit that's on your user. Um, in your particular Drupal install. And that's something also to look up and spend some time with. Um, obviously, that's, I don't think that's been covered at this camp, but that's something to be aware of as well, that um, you have, by default, out of the box, Drupal sets limits on file sizes that, that you can use, so you, as the administrator, might need to go in and make adjustments to those default file sizes out of the box. Yeah. I think PHP admin also has some limits. Yeah. 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 You definitely, definitely don't need to. You can definitely exclude your cache files, uh, your cache data from the tables, and and it's definitely recommended that you do exclude those. Um, any other questions? Okay, I'm going to quickly point you all to a site before we give this to the next presenters. Also, we're late for a session now. We are. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are. Oh, we are. Um, so I'm going to very quickly point you to um, sunrainproductions.com slash DrupalCampLA, um, which has a link to this entire presentation plus the um, third of it that we didn't get to, um, So, which talks about uh, a module called Secure Site and some other great modules and gives you links. So on sunrainproductions.com slash DrupalCampLA, the second option here is Site Migration Basics. Um, we have on here, first of all, the entire outline and all the links. 
And then um, the slides in both PDF and OpenOffice, and then also uh, slides for running cron, or a PDF uh, for running cron on GoDaddy and cPanel. The DreamHost one is in the regular slideshow. Um, so, so definitely take a look at that and use this. We wanted to spend some time actually letting you do this here in the room with us here, but um, obviously we filled it up. So, um, so try this, and, and if you can try it sometime today, I will be at the Drupal Chicks uh, table, I think, for the rest of the day. So, um, so you can come by after our Drupal Chicks panel, which yes. is right now in the community room um, in 11.31. So if you have burning questions about how we can get more women into Drupal and retain them, that's where you might want to be. But if you have more questions about this, I think you might want to go to Chris Stefano's continuation yes, of this topic. Thank you, everybody, for coming.